while we raise the leadership question, there are also important issues to be raised around voter education. Hence, our guest this morning, Mr. Victor Aluku, is the Director of Voter Education and Publicity at the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC. You're welcome to Sunrise Daily this morning. Thank you. Thanks for having me. A compliment to the city. I wish you the same. It's so easy to forget that we're still in the period of Christmas. Uh, but yes, we are. Uh, but, but we're already projecting into 2022 yes. and the Herculean uh, job of work that INEC will have on its hands. Uh, what do you think will be the biggest challenge of educating the voting public in 2022? The biggest challenge is actually uh, our ability to generate interest in the 2023 elections. We must generate interest uh, within the Nigerian public because when you look at this, this, the situation today, people are sort of concerned with so many things. Family issues, social political issues, social economic issues, and we, we, within, within that mix, we must generate interest in the elections so that people will actually participate effectively. That is the challenge. Mm -hmm. Getting people to participate. That's very telling. Uh, voter apathy seems to be the biggest challenge you have on your hands. Uh, and and it, it, will be, it will be really a Herculean uh, job of work that INEC will have, you know, in trying to um, overcome that. But I imagine that you're not going to be working alone. No, um, no. Uh, and I think that sometimes if you're able to identify why people have this apathy, perhaps addressing it, uh, might be a lot easier. Have you been able to see, well, I know you've pointed out a number of issues, yes, you know, yes. social economic problems, etc. But, you know, for some people too, they say a lack of trust in the system, in the system. and not being able to relate the outcome so far yeah. with uh, what they have. Yeah, I, how, how do you keep telling them that, look, it is, const it is related to your current situation and this can be the solution? You know, the, the, the important thing, really, is that as a commission, people must have uh, sort of uh, trusting us. We must be credible. And of course, you know, in, in the past years, ANEC has become a very credible organization. In fact, the editorial of this day, I mean, of trust yesterday, described ANEC as perhaps the most improved public institution in Nigeria today. So I believe that people are seeing a new INEC in terms of our ability to deliver and in terms of our ability to be fair, to be credible, and to serve, to serve the yearnings of uh, voters who ordinarily before would just say, ah, is it not INEC? But today we're, we're a very credible organization. And another thing so is. So that, that should make your job easy? It, it should, it should, it should. At least that's a good foundation. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the, as I said, the, the atmosphere, the political electoral atmosphere goes beyond INEC. But for us, we we'll, we'll identified a number of issues that has to do with us as an institution in terms of making sure that people are able to assess polling units. On election day, if the place you will vote is so far away from you, that's the first area of discouragement. Because a voter must wake up in his house, wear his cloth, either take his bath or not, wear his cloth, move out of his house to the polling unit to go and vote. It's a very important decision, a very important activity. So we don't take it for granted. So we try our best to make sure we expand the pony units in the country so that it will be, the units will be nearer to the people, so that you don't have to walk long distances to vote. That is one thing. Secondly, we try to also make the procedures credible. Make the procedures credible. If you, in the elections we conducted recently, we talked about technology, using technology to be able to reduce the human the human decision-making process. You know, human beings, we are created by God too. We can do either good or bad. Technology is technology. So we brought, we brought these issues of um, using, using uh, equipment. Before we were using smart card readers. Now we are talking about the, the bimodal water efficiency system. We also brought what we call the INEC Resolve View Portal to make sure that people are able to see the result at the polling unit so that nobody goes to the collection center and starts, uh, and starts calling 108801. <laughs> so these are the issues that, as an institution, we have improved a lot. So it's important for an institution like this, like us, to improve. Another thing, for the country itself, 
the people must choose their leaders. People must be encouraged to choose well. There are two, there are two different things, choosing leaders and choosing well. So the, it's not only for INEC. We collaborate, of course, with all the stakeholders. Mm. So, so tell us the difference on, on that, choosing leaders and choosing well. Because we try to encourage voters that you should know who you are voting for. Nowadays, in many, in many elections, local government elections, uh, area council elections, um, state assembly elections, many voters don't even know who they vote for. They just go there. They, they don't even know the person. They just go there to vote for the party and then they go away. You should know the candidate you are voting for. Who is he? What has he done? What, what is he bringing to the table? What will, he, what will he do for your constituency? So people, so there's a difference between just going to vote and voting well. As a, develop, as a developing country, we want people to vote well because decisions people make when they become leaders, when they go to assemblies, when they be uh, state assemblies, even the, 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 the councillor, the local government uh, councillor or some, something. Decisions people make are important to the lives of people. So people must be able to choose people, uh, uh, leaders well, so that they'll be able to reap the dividends of democracy. When we talk about dividends of democracy, it's not just for saying it. Leaders must lead well. And sometimes, if you're not a good leader, how do you lead well? So these are the issues, and so we believe that we must generate interest in the 2023 elections. We, all, we try our best to do that in every electoral circle, and we try to get, uh, we try to collaborate with those agencies, stakeholders, the media, the, the other stakeholders, the political parties, the civil society organizations, to be able to, you know, let Nigerians know that the, 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 the time for elections have come again and you have to vote, and these are the things you have to do. Another thing is, as a commission, we also try our best to prepare voters, because you don't just, you don't just come on election day and say, yes, our polling units are open, come and, come and go and vote. No, we try, you must prepare each voter for the election. Each voter is unique. We are all different people with different problems, with different uh, so ideas. So what is preparing the voter involved? One, those who have not registered, you must provide a platform for them to register. Though, and when they register, mm -hmm. you have to print your, their PVCs, permanent voters' cards, and give to them. Those who have problems with their, with their registration, who have problems with their cards, there are people who maybe they went, they, they went to vote before they, they, they had cards, their names were not in the register, their names were in the register, their cards were already defaced, all that. So people who have problems, you have to solve those problems. If people have defaced or damaged or lost cards, you encourage them to come up. Let us know. We will give you new ones. I, I was just Those... about to, you know, for, you know, I thought that uh, voter registration was going to be a special question. <laughs> okay. You're, you're you know, on that I preparation put, put, yes, of voters. You have to prepare the voter yes. for so the election. I, I, what I would like to know is how, because I do know that in the past, and I, knew, I know that there have been attempts to make the process easier. That's yes. what I was saying in the past. Okay. It used to be a little cumbersome. Even things as simple as changing your polling unit which ought to be easier. We're, we're told that, oh, you have to write a letter uh, no, to the no, INEC chair. Are we still, is it still that letter. way? How no, easy is it to change your polling unit, for instance? The, the process is quite simple. Changing the polling unit means you want to transfer uh, your, your registration from one place to the other. You can transfer within your local government. You can transfer within your state. You can transfer from one state to the other. Mm -hmm. All you need to do is, when we like, when we having CVR, you go you go to the uh, registration our regional center, and you you let the registration official know this is what you want to do. Whether you want to transfer, whether you, your card is damaged or lost, you need another one, so you, or whether you have issues with your 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 data. So you let them know this is. This is what I want. I want to transfer. Okay, I'm in Abuja. I live, I live in, in Abaji. I want to transfer to Buhari. So you, you, are in, you, are in the, you are in the center in Abaji. You are in our office in Abaji. And of course, immediately the, 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 the officer there will give you a form. We have forms. We have form. You just fill that form. You fill that form. Of course, we expect you to, like your, your passport photograph, you know. At least you must show some level of responsibility that you, you are really serious. Your passport photograph. And of course, you bring your, your, your former card. So that's all you have to do. 
So the official is it going to be done at the local government or where is this for CVR? For CVR now, we normally do at the local government office or our state uh, offices or the FCT office. You have to go in person to be able to do to be able to do that. Or, you know, so that's that's really a little clumsy. It's not clumsy because it's not clumsy. Another thing is that we also have the online, the online thing. If if really you're not able to go immediately, you can you can assess. Our, our CVR uh, registration portal online. And immediately you, you, you type CVR annex Nigeria.org, it comes up, it pops up, whether you're using your, your, your mobile, or whether you're using your, your laptop. And then you begin to, to input your data, you begin to say what you want, just like other portals for other things. What you want is it, you want to transfer, you click. Then mm. it starts giving you the things. Then you now go later to go and complete it when you have time. Why? So it's very easy. The reason why some of these things are extremely important to bring up is because it will seem that consistently every electoral cycle, certain demographics are... Uh, no, no, no. Okay. Certain demographics are disenfranchised mm. by nature of, you know, just who they are. For instance, students, uh, especially university students, oftentimes during elections... Uh, Schools close. Yeah. They ask students to go home. Many times when the registration process is happening, it's happening within schools or happening around schools. And when they, when they close, when the students go home, it means that if they're at home and they're in different states or a different place, they might not be able to vote. Um, security personnel who are going to be you know, very busy during the ele election period are also oftentimes disenfranchised. Uh, journalists yes. who cover yeah. the, uh, maybe you shouldn't say INEC officials <laughs> of as course, well. Of course, because we too will be on the field. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, I, and yes. it would seem that these classes of people over the years, it's just been taken for granted that they rarely vote yes. because of the nature of work that they do. True. Uh, is INEC looking at anything to make it easier for, you know, these classes of people to be able to vote regardless of where they might be on election day as a result of their duties? Okay, before, um, so let me just say that we encourage people, like students now, we try to encourage people to register where they want to vote. You know, we say you should be resident in that, in that registration area or that local government where you want to vote. Our system, uh, we have not really set a system where you can vote anywhere. Maybe in future we'll get there, but we have not gotten there. I believe we'll get there. Then there's all this use of absentee voting. There's use of voting before the election, like they do in the US. We have not gotten to that stage. But I believe that as we develop, we will get there. So for now, we encourage people to actually register where they want to vote. If you are a student and you are in Abuja University, and there are centers. Um, let's say, okay, now we are at Buja University. We encourage you to put your, when you go to our office to register on the CVR, put the address of your house in Wuse. If you are going to be with your parents in Wuse, it's the same thing all over the country. Because on election, so day, on election day, you won't be in school. Can you register in school but use the address of your parents' house? Is it possible? What you're saying is, you can, you, 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 you can start online as a student. Okay. You can start online, and then during the weekend, you know, you can start online. During the weekend, you go to, our, you go to the, the FCT office. And of course, you state where you, 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 your parents live, where you live with your parents. So when they, they, of course, your address will come up. The reason is that when we are allocating people to where they will vote, you have to be located to the, to the polling unit within, within that ward. So, you know, registration is not like before. Where we just roll out, roll out um, 120,000 registration centers like we used to do many, many, many years ago. Now it's a, it's a simplified version. And it's not everybody that's registering. It's only for certain persons who did not register before. People who are now of age who did not register before. You know, those are the ones we call out to come and register. And they're not really that plenty. It's not as if. Uh, 50 million people will be coming to this. No, no, no. Well, we, we do know that, you know, after people have registered, getting people to come and take their cards has also been a challenge. We try our best to, to also let people know. Um, we, you know, we, we, when we get your, your data, we also get your phone numbers, email, you know, for people who have email addresses. And we try to let you know 
we try to let you know that your, your card is now ready. Like the FCT now, by next week, we'll start distributing the cards were printed for about 39,000 persons. So we, we'll communicate with them one-on-one -on -one to let them know. We communicate them not only once. In fact, we, many times we, we'll be sending messages to them because it's important that you collect your P permanent voter's card so that you can vote. If you registered uh, uh, during the, the, the CVR wording, and you did not collect the card. Then you are not. You are just half a voter. You are not a complete voter. Mm. So, so uh, let me put it this way: someone has just moved to, say, Abuja, for instance. Yes. Um, I don't know what my where my polling unit is. I don't know anything about. I mean, because you don't see polling units until the election days, oftentimes. Um, how does the how is the person able to identify? Uh, where he or she will be voting or, you know, what is how the political arrangement in his or her area ahead of the elections? There are two things you can do. You can go to the uh, local government office, to the electoral officer, and physically ask him. You physically ask him, and he will show you the records where, you, where you're supposed to vote. Or you can also check your registration status online. You can check your registration status online by, of course, Going to uh, the uh, the org, uh, www or going to our website and then click on the on the on the status area, so you'll be able to see the world you are. And if you are in your world, that world, and the polling units in the world, one thing on election day is that when voters come to the to the polling unit, there are people who don't even know which 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 particular unit. Maybe there's a unit here. 100 meters away, that's another unit. Of course, we have an assistant presiding officer who will look at your card and let you know that, ah, Oga, just go to the other side. So we try to solve these problems and make it easy for people, you know. So the website is a place to go. I think that's uh, what our producers are just scrolling yes. for you on, on television, www.inec.org. Oh, okay. And if your card is missing or stolen, um, how do you go about it? You know, once, if your card is missing or stolen, you know, you have opportunity, like I said, during the contemporary registration to, to present yourself, to request, to request for a replacement. Actually, replacement is your right. But you have to, you can't do it by proxy. You have to ask for it. You know, because the cards are printed with money. So, so you, you must go to the INEC office um, in the local government before you can get that process started. You don't start from online if your you, card you, is missing. I told you that you can start online. Okay. Either for replacement or me, because once you, you type CVR uh, and Nigeria.org, the, the portal pops up. And of course, in the port, just like any other thing, you, you say what you, want, what you want to do. Is it that you want to register afresh? Is it that you want to you want a replacement of your card? You know, then you start you start you know acting according to the dictates of, of what is coming 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 up for you. Okay. And if you also can easily get to our office, then it's even it's even very okay. You just go and talk to the electoral officer, who of course will courteously uh, 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 attend to you because that is his work. We are to serve the people. That's why we are there. Okay, we look forward to your service in the coming days. Uh, I think the Nigerians will let, let us know how you have served them. I want to believe that people will certainly give us feedback of what it has been like. Do let us know if your, feed, if your experience is positive or otherwise. We, we're hoping that it will not be. But if it is otherwise, uh, we certainly will get word across to Mr. Victor Aloko, who will be disturbing in a few. He <laughs> 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 will be disturbing a lot in uh, 2022, you know, to at least let us know what is happening with regards to voter education. And, um, uh, and um, yeah, virtual education and enlightenment. We have to thank you so much for coming on Sunrise Edith this morning. Thank you. We have been speaking with Mr. Victor Aluko, who is the Director, Virtual Education and Publicity at INEC.